Hello and welcome to this special program looking at the growing global problem of drug resistant bacteria or superbugs. Each year these superbugs kill around 700,000 people in almost every country in the world. But without action this number could reach as many as 10 million by 2050. That's more than die from cancer. One recent study commissioned by the UK government says this could cost the world's economies more than $100 trillion over the next 35 years. In a moment we'll look at how that drug resistance develops in bacteria and why the drugs don't work. But first we visit a clinic near the Indian capital New Delhi. He's just 14 months old, but for months Aaron Shibu has been ill. He caught drug-resistant typhoid, and now, after two courses of treatment, he finally has the all clear. Most of the cases uh, that we have had are uh, drug-resistant cases. Most of them, almost all, almost all of them have been multi-drug resistant, so it is a problem. For adults too, getting the right medical treatment is a growing challenge. I got medicines from one doctor and then another and then another. When the first treatment didn't work, I went to another for help. But then the second doctor's treatment didn't help either. It was only when she visited a third doctor that she found she had drug-resistant tuberculosis. Drug resistance is going to lead to a huge number of deaths. Millions of people are going to die due to causes that could have been treated. We've seen the impact superbugs have on human health, but in animal health it's also a massive issue. In the United States, 80% of the antibiotics sold each year are fed to animals. One survey suggested 63,000 tonnes of antibiotics are fed to chickens, pigs and cattle each year. As a result, superbugs are increasing in animal populations and with it, the risk it will spread to human populations. It's a trend that's being seen in the developing world as well, where meat demand is growing fast. Next, we visit a chicken farm near Nairobi in Kenya. <laughs> Business is booming for Daniel Kariuki, and the key to his success is antibiotics. He puts them into his chicken's drinking water every day. Uh, there are times that that disease becomes persistent. You find that you have given the treatment as required, but maybe 50% of the birds have not been cured. So what happens, you have to change the type that you are using, because that means it's not effective. In the developed world, most countries have already reached their maximum meat consumption. But in the world's giant emerging economies like Brazil and China, it's been growing for decades and it's expected to grow for decades to come. G20 countries account for 80% of the world's meat production and make up a very large proportion of antibiotic consumption in livestock. And it's a problem that affects absolutely everybody in the world. Everybody is dependent on, on antimicrobials for their public health and, uh, and for their livestock's health as well. And so it's, 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 it's a massive problem that's just going to get worse and worse unless we start to deal with it now. Let's take a look now at how drug resistance develops. Take a bacteria like E. coli. We all have E. coli in our gut, but some strains of it can cause diarrhea, kidney failure, even death. Now traditionally, you would have treated that with penicillin, one of the first antibiotics discovered. The thing is, penicillin causes the cell membranes to rupture, job done. Now the problem arises when patients don't take the full course of their antibiotics, or perhaps the antibiotics are of poor quality. This gives the bacteria the chance to mutate and develop resistance to the drug. If this happens, the drugs don't work, and the drug resistance strain of bacteria can fast become dominant. One issue that experts say is compounding the problem is we're not coming up with enough new drugs. In fact, the last antibiotic to come to market was almost 30 years ago. It's simply too expensive and too slow for the major pharmaceutical companies to make the investment. But that may be about to change. And I'm going to grab your temperature. According to the Centers for Disease Control, drug-resistant bacteria infect 2 million people a year in the United States. 23,000 of them die. In their search for new antibiotics, scientists have largely focused on microorganisms that are easy to cultivate in the lab. Now they're looking beyond these and are developing technology like this device that isolates organisms, some of them found in dirt, and lets them grow the way they do in nature. It lets nature 
provide the necessary component for growth, and then the cell grows and forms a colony. And once it forms a colony, we can explore this colony on its ability to produce a new antibiotic. To encourage this hunt for new drugs, a report prepared for the UK government has suggested creating a fund that could pay out up to $1.5 billion to pharmaceutical companies if they develop new antibiotics. It takes the downside risks away for the pharmaceutical industry to undertake these kind of risks, which from a world I've lived in of risk versus reward, I would have thought that seemed like a pretty important attraction. We're pursuing lots of other important paths, and in particular one that, in my growing judgment, is perhaps the most important, which is the demand side of the problem, and we all stop wanting to use antibiotics as though they're sweets, and put pressure on uh, our food companies to stop using them for feeding animals. So, better diagnostics, uh, less if not no use of antibiotics for fattening up animals and probably a major education campaign uh, specific to different parts of the world to just let people know that just taking antibiotics isn't necessarily a good thing to do. That's all we have time for in this special program. There's plenty more on superbugs and what's being done to address the global threat on our website at aljazeera.com. Thanks for watching, goodbye.